What is going on guys, DBG here, in this video I'm going to be going over all 30 historic collection rewards in NBA 2K18, my team. I've already gone over all 30 current collection rewards, that will be my last video and a link to that will be in the outro. And in that video I didn't actually know where the source of it was, but I'm almost certain that Sub the Gamer who was at the event was streaming this and I think that's the reason why we all know who these players are. So I will leave a link to his channel in the description. If you guys want proof of this, it will be in his stream. It's the hour long video of about 100k views. But anyway, yeah, so let's get on to these players. While I was excited about the current collection rewards, them being much, much better than last year, the historic collection rewards aren't too exciting. And apart from one or two, there's no, doesn't seem to be any real reason to complete them, especially early in the game. We'll know when 2K Empty Central gets all the stats, we'll know if there's any complete beasts, but for the players that I know what the stats are going to be in around, I'm not that excited. So we're going to start off with the Eastern Conference, and we're going to go over the East and then the West. So from the Eastern Conference, first for the Philadelphia 76ers is Billy Cunningham. Billy Cunningham's a new player in the game, and is a small forward who's not going to be the best at slashing, and also shot an extremely low percentage from three in his career. I can see him being a bit like an Alex English from the Denver Nuggets last year, just a little worse without any ability really to dunk but the thing is like they may give him a th high three-point rating even though when he did shoot with the 3.9 in the M in the ABA sorry he only shot like less than 20% which is terrible but Billy Cunningham I can't really say it I don't know what he's gonna be like I've never seen him in 2k before then we've got Vin Baker for the books the exact same thing again like I have no idea what he's gonna be like and it's the exact same with the Bulls player it's Jerry Sloan a lot of these players are new to game this year, so I can't really give too much of an opinion on them. Obviously, I'm just telling you guys who they are, but the ones that I can give an opinion, I'm going to say what I think they're going to be like. Next, we've got Brad Daughtry, and I liked his diamond last year. I thought his diamond was really good, but his diamond did have like a 75-3, and I don't think they're going to boost three-point ratings, especially at the start of the game, as much as they did last year. So Brad Daughtry's always a good inside center. He rebounds well, he blocks a couple of shots well because he's tall, and has really good inside moves. While... Yeah, like I can't see him being too worth it, to be honest, but you never know. It could be an okay card, I guess, but like I can't see him being extremely, extremely good, but I can't see him being a bad card, but he's probably not going to be worth a playing in a star collection for. Next, we have got Sam Jones from the Celtics. Sam Jones is an extremely effective spot-up shooter, and he always has been in 2K. Again, is he going to be worth a playing in a star collection for? More than likely that Reggie Lewis card will be better than the Sam Jones card, even though Sam Jones will shoot a lot better. He's an undersized two guard without too much driving ability. So again, like considering you have to lock in a collection for him, I can't see it being worth it. Could be a great card, but locking in a collection for a card like that, I don't think it's gonna be worth it. Next up, we've got Joe Johnson from the Atlanta Hawks. I was actually pleasantly surprised with Joe Johnson last year because he was really, really good for me, especially that Ruby card that you were able to pick up for like 1K MT. So Joe Johnson is going to be a solid card, I'm guessing. His release is still awkward, but it's nowhere near as bad as it has been in previous years. Like in previous years, Joe Johnson's release made his card pretty much unusable, but last year it was actually quite decent. Again, Joe Johnson, will he, is he good enough to lock in a collection for? Probably not, probably not. And then we've got Ronnie Seek, Seekly, Seekly, I don't know how to pronounce that name. I know he's the leading rebounder in Heat history, and I know his game probably won't translate too well to 2K, but I can't say him for sure now because I don't know. Al Jefferson for the Hornets this could be a beast, will be one of the best inside scorers in the game, definitely. But again, locking in a collection for a card that won't be able to play defense, won't be able to rebound, won't be worth it. David Lee for New York Knicks. David Lee is was insane in real life he was great he was like a two or three time all-star but like david lee in 2k is terrible david lee's release is broken even though he's got high mid-range stats he can't really shoot and he's a card he should just pass on aaron aflalo could be an interesting one he was an all-star in 2014 and he's got an amethyst card with the magic he could be a really interesting one if he has like really good defensive stats because he was a great defender he's got really high shooting stats as well as decent driving stats he could be a good one to pick up he could low-key be the best one of these to pick up then we've got Derek Cohen for the Nets, who's going to be a good card. He's a tall power forward who can run a little bit, who can shoot the ball, who can play inside a little bit. Is he good enough to lock in a collection? Who knows? But we'll have to wait for the game out to see. Rick Smith for the Indiana Pacers is 7 foot either 2 or 4, I can't remember. So he's going to be really, really tall, but he's not going to have much else. You might as well, rather than locking in a collection for the Pacers, you might as well just get a Sean Bradley or a Manute Bowl or a Mirasan. Next, we've got Bob Lanier for the Pistons. Bob Lanier is, 
I don't really like his cards normally. He's undersized for center without any sort of elite jump shot. So he's really going to struggle in the game. Next, we've got Antonio Davis for the Toronto Raptors. Again, Antonio Davis is going to be a decent card. His Sapphire was all right last year. But an Amethyst Antonio Davis, like his Amethyst wasn't good last year. cost like 8k MT. And again, it's not going to be something that's going to be worth locking in any collection for. And then we've got Rod Strickland for the Wizards. I don't know exactly how he's going to be in game. I have no idea. So yeah, that's the Eastern Conference. Jerry Sloan could be a good one to um, lock in. But the thing is, you have to lock in a Michael Jordan card. Yep, you're going to be able to get a Michael Jordan card into the Star Collection. But I'm just trying to think of the Eastern Conference, which ones would be good. We don't know about Billy Cunningham. We don't know about Baker or Sloan. Dartry probably not good to lock in. Same as Sam Jones and Joe Johnson and Al Jefferson and David Lee. A Flalo might be a beast. Derek Coleman could be quite good. And that's probably it. So there's very few in the East that I'm really excited about locking in. And now we're on to the Western Conference. First of all, we have got the Denver Nuggets who have got Mahmoud Abdul-Raouf. He's going to be a beast. He's going to be able to dunk the ball. He was actually in the dunk contest one time, but I don't think he actually made a dunk. He was a great shooter, and he's going to have great handles, and he's also one of the best free throw shooters in NBA history, so he's going to have like a 98 free throw. He's probably a bit undersized to lock in a collection for, and there's probably going to be better rubies for lower salary caps, but again, not a bad card. Mike Bibby, his game doesn't really translate to 2K too much. I used his card last year a little bit, and he was good, but not great. Going to be a decent shooter, but he isn't going to be able to drive too much because he couldn't really dunk well and he's going to get swatted a lot inside. So, yeah, there's no real point in locking it in. Xavier McDaniel, however, for the Thunder, could be a beast. He's going to have a really high dunk rating. Maybe with an Amethyst, they'll give him a decent shot and he's going to be fast and athletic. So he's going to be able to get to the basket. He could be a really, really good one to lock in. And he's one of the few that I'm actually excited about. Next, we've got for the Portland Trailblazers, LaMarcus Aldridge. LaMarcus Aldridge is going to have a very good post fadeaway and post hook. He's going to be great inside. He's going to have a great mid-range shot, but the making or breaking of this card is all going to be in the three-point shot. If they give LaMarcus Aldridge an 80-plus three-point shot, it could be a great card to lock in. But if he doesn't have an 80-plus three-point shot, nah, there's no, there's no real reason to lock in the card. Because there's going to be players with lower tiers that are going to do very similar things, play very well inside, and always shoot decent mid-range shots. And if LaMarcus Aldridge can step out of the three, it puts him ahead of them. If not puts him slightly, it puts him on the same level, and you're going to need to lock in a collection for him. Next, you've got Stefan Marbury, who a lot of people are going to try lock in straight away because there's a lot of hype around him. Just like there was a lot of hype around Diamond Chris Paul last year. But Stefan Marbury, I don't think he's going to be that good in game. Stefan Marbury wasn't really a dunker. He wasn't really a slasher, and he was a good but not exceptional shooter. Stefan Marbury was just a great scorer, but his game doesn't translate that well into 2K. If a player like Baron Davis was for the Warriors, that would have been incredible. But I don't think that Stefan Marbury's game translates too well into 2K. So even though a lot of people are going to lock him in, I don't think it's great. Sleepy Floyd for the Warriors. I don't know. I honestly don't. His diamond was one of my favorite cards in my team last year. But his ruby, I used him on someone else's account. And he was just meh. Like, not a great card, not a bad card. It all depends on what they do with his release and what they do with his three-point and mid-range stats, but we just don't really know with Sleepy Floyd. Danny Manning for the Clippers, I have no idea. Rudy Gay for the Grizzlies. This is going to be more than likely the best of them all. Rudy Gay. Like, I predicted him to be a historic domination reward, and I was cl I was actually quite close. Because even though he wasn't a domination reward, he was still a historic collection reward. Like, I predicted Rip Hamilton, Stefan Marbury, and uh, Rudy Gay to be domination rewards. Even though they weren't domination rewards, three of the five I predicted were still reward cards in some way. And I was certain that there was going to be a Rudy Gay reward card. But this card will be insane. It'll have an 85 plus three-point shot. 95 plus dunk, he's going to be able to handle the ball, he's going to be able to drive, he's going to be able to play defense, and Rudy Gay just always plays above his stats, so this card will be a beast, and probably the best one to lock in. Which is great for me, because, as you guys probably know, I will be more than likely, again, entering KLK with the Grizzlies, and I love that Rudy Gay card. Next up, Mark Eaton for the Jazz. Very like Rick Smith, just a big body, and there'll be better options, well, there'll be equally as good options for a lot cheaper. Now for the Lakers, George Mikan. An undersized center who could be great, but like his diamond last year was outclassed by a lot of amateurs, and I don't think it'll be worth locking in a collection, especially because the Lakers is going to be a good overall collection and will be expensive. Jamal Mashburn for the Mavs might be a good one, especially if he's cheap, because Mashburn is 6'8", he can shoot, he can get to the basket, he can play a little bit inside, he can play out, and he's just going to be an all-around good player. PJ Brown for the Pelicans, I have absolutely no idea. Like, absolutely no idea. Calvin Murphy for the Rockets, the exact same. I have no idea what they're going to be like. 
And then the one that I think is going to be the best is Spurs' George Gervin, who's a 93 overall amethyst. Yep, 93 isn't a diamond, it's an amethyst. George Gervin is going to be great. George Gervin has a really nice jump shot normally in 2K. He's got really weird handles. He's had the Slenderman build the last couple of years, but like a slightly different Slenderman build. He's, his handles just seem awkward. He's always able to get to the basket really well. And I don't know what it is about George Gervin. I just love every George Gervin card I've used. I used to use his, was it 2K15 or 2K16, where he had like an 80 rated gold card. And I used to just use that a ton because I loved it. And then same in like 2K13 or 14, sorry, when he had the silver card for the Chicago Bulls. I used to use that card a lot as well. George Gervin's just always a really good card in 2K. And if I was to lock in any collection, it would probably be that one. Then we've got for the Suns, Paul Westfall. Again, I've got absolutely no idea what he's gonna be like. So anyway, that's the video. These are all 30 collection rewards. So yeah, that's it. We've gone through the historic collection rewards and the normal collection rewards. From the historic collection, there's very few that I think really that you'd lock in. We don't know the stats of the players yet. We don't know the players that we haven't seen, but you kind of know, like you know exactly what type of player someone like Mike Bibby's gonna be. You know exactly what type of player George Mikan's gonna be, Brad Daughtry. It's just the new ones that are a little bit interesting, but I don't actually know what they're gonna be like, so I can't really comment on whether you should get them or not. The current collection awards I think are really good this year. I actually think they're a big step up from last year because they're not sapphires, but these are a step down because they're not diamonds. I can't see these cards being too useful after Christmas, so I actually don't think there's much of a reason to ever lock in any of these collections because it's unlikely 2K does a massive boost like they did last year, and 2K probably are just gonna start releasing diamonds probably around February, so they're gonna be really useful up to then, but once the diamonds start getting released, these amethysts are gonna be really overpowered, especially because something like the intangibles thing will happen where diamonds released the end of the game were way better than diamonds released to start. Like a 93 overall diamond released the end of 2K17 was better than 97 overall diamond released to start. Don't ask me why, but that's the way 2K just did their rating system. So anyway, that's the video. Shout out to Sub the Gamer for streaming this. And as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.